My name is Greg, and I am a teacher here on Cambly. I am from Denver, Colorado, in the United States. Today, I want to talk with you about how to use gerunds. Many English learners are often intimidated by gerunds, but I am here to show you how easy they can be. Let's start with what a gerund is. A gerund is a verb that acts like a noun. This means that we often use a gerund in a sentence the same way we would use a noun. A gerund is conjugated with the ing ending, just like in the present continuous. There are four main ways in which we use a gerund. First, as the subject of the sentence. Second, as the direct object of the sentence. Third, as the subject complement of a sentence, and finally, as an object of a preposition. Let's look at a few examples of these uses. First, when we use a gerund as the subject of the sentence, we place it at the beginning of the sentence. Let's say, for example, we want to tell someone about the benefits of going for a run. We can conjugate the verb to run into the gerund form running and place it at the beginning of the sentence to say running is a good way to exercise. Another example would be the sentence cooking is my favorite hobby. In this sentence cooking is both our subject because it's first and a gerund. To use a gerund as the direct object of a verb, our second form, let's look at the sentence, he likes playing basketball. In this sentence, our subject, he likes, we can ask, what does he like? He likes playing. Therefore, our gerund playing is the direct object of the verb like. As another example, in the sentence they prefer reading at night, we can ask what do they prefer? They prefer reading. In both of these examples, the gerund is the direct object of the verb. It is helpful to familiarize yourself with the different verbs that allow a gerund to be the direct object. Some common verbs include like, love, stop, allow, and try. These are common verbs, but not all of the verbs that allow gerunds. So, it is important to become familiar with the larger list. When a gerund is placed as the subject complement, our third reason, our third way, the gerund will follow a linking verb, such as the verb to be. For example, we can take the gerund swimming and make the sentence, my favorite activity is swimming. In this sentence, swimming describes favorite activity. So, it is our subject complement. We can see a similar example in the sentence, my goal was sailing around the world. Sailing is both our gerund and subject complement in this sentence. The last and fourth way that we can use gerunds is how we talk about as object of a preposition. A gerund can follow prepositions such as for, to, in, off, of, from, on, or about. There are more examples of prepositions that a gerund can be an object of, but these are some common examples. When a gerund is the object of a preposition, 
a verb or adjective must come before the preposition. For example, in the sentence, I am interested in improving myself, the verb and preposition combination interested in is followed by the preposition's object, the gerund improving. This rule is similar in the sentence, they are afraid of losing the game. In this example, our adjective and preposition combination, afraid of, is followed by our object, losing. In both examples, the gerund is the object of the preposition in the sentence. These four examples, subject, direct object, subject complement, and object of a preposition are the four main ways in which we use a gerund. I hope this lesson helps you to recognize and use gerunds in the future. Thank you for listening. I can be found on Cambly both mornings and nights most days. If you would like to book a class with me, please follow the link in the description. I hope to see you in the classroom. Thank you.